going to be a fun episode we're going to be talking about practical techniques for moving on to the, what are we there's so many words for it moving into the best timeline hacking the matrix spiritually evolving growing going up the fiery spiral of ascension waking up uh playing and being in control of the video game whatever god mode whatever you want to call it and like sometimes we go out of God mode so we can remember how to put ourselves back in God mode. That's cool. That's really cool. I like it. All right. So this episode, Lifting the Cloud, this is basically going to be my interpretation of something I heard Neville Goddard say. Some every so there, you need to find people and voices that resonate with you. That's important. I recognize for some people listening, that's me. I get it. It's cool. It's no big deal. You don't have to be weird about it. Neville Goddard was one of those people for me. It's in this like weird synchronicities and all this shit. But like, he's fucking cool. And when I revisit anything that he's spoken about, and I don't think I've I don't think I've read or listened to everything. But when I when I go and find something, it always seems to be at the perfect time. And it's like, holy shit, what the fuck is that? Some type of weird magic. But it it's just the way things work. So he has, there's, what is the, the book? I believe it's a series of lectures he gave in San Francisco called Manifest Your Desires is what it's put up. It's on Audible. You can check it out. Should I link to it? I should probably link to it. Whatever. Go find it. You know how it works. Um, it's fucking great. It's very practical. I think it was like a weekend seminar, maybe a weekly, a week-long seminar. And this dude... He's just fucking killing it. Now there's Bible stuff. There's Jesus stuff. And we're going to, for this episode, we're going to skip over most of it. Not because it's not amazing. Just if you have religious, uh, what do you call it? Interpretations, uh, uh, tendencies, reactions to. So again, you don't want to hear about Jesus. You don't want to hear about the Bible. It's cool. The Bible's fine. It's just a story. They're not real characters, not real people. They're you dressed up as other people going through a metaphysical process of recognizing that you're God, that your imagination is God, you're an aspect of God, you quite literally have the ability to create whatever you experience. That's God. That's fucking cool. You're doing it all the time. I think I've emphasized that enough over the years, over the years, over the year, whatever, over two years, whenever I've been talking about this shit. Um, So we're going to talk about a bunch of shit, but the main thing we're going to be talking about I guess since I wrote it down is lifting the cloud. We'll see if I stick to that script. I think I can. So lifting the cloud, what the fuck does that mean? Now we can think whatever connotations come with that. Well, maybe there's like some brain frog or something like that. But that's not really exactly what it is. So what we're talking about is we'll revisit the first imaginal technique, right? You're going to sleep. You're in a state akin to sleep, as Neville Goddard would put it. Just like a drowsy light attention, totally there, not too hard, not too soft, but you can control the movements of your mind and you can start constructing a scene that implies you are the person that you want to be, you have everything you want, you understand, you live this out, you feel this out from within your own perspective, then you drift off to sleep where it's then created and constructed by the real you or a realer version of you. You're still real. It's not the real you. It's just a, a different dimensional version of yourself then goes and builds the circumstances of your world. You wake up into the world and all this shit happens. Okay, so what's lifting the cloud? Often, when we're in our conscious minds, or even when we're trying to do the techniques when we go to sleep, is we can find, like, there's we there's mental resistance. There's, like, I don't feel like that. I don't think that's true. This isn't positive. You just start going off into a whole series of thoughts and ideas and feelings. 
And you're like, what the fuck is that? So this, that's what's described as the cloud, right? And so your body is the temple, right? And a lot of people know this. It's not like a, it's like a hippie new age thing at this point. But your body literally is a temple, not in the sense like don't eat McDonald's, don't smoke cigarettes. You can do those if you want. <laughs> like I just give, I'm the worst. Literally just give people permission to do whatever they want. What kind of, what? how am I a parent? I don't let my kid uh, smoke cigarettes and eat McDonald's yet. I actually have offered him McDonald's. I didn't really want it. He's, he's got his other things. Um, but anyway, you your body is a... T- yes, honor it. Don't fucking be shitty to it. No one likes that. You don't want to be shitty to anything. It's you after all. But what it really means is God dwells within that temple. This temple is movable. You can bring it around with you. It doesn't ever leave you. It's always there. But sometimes there's a cloud. There's a cloud above the temple, and you can't really see clearly and have that connection to that bright signing, sh- signing shun. Yoy, shining sun is what I meant to say. You don't always have access to that. There's a cloud there. So what do you do? What's going on here, right? There's some golden rings. Here's a thing to visualize when you're doing this, just to get you in this state where you can lift up the clouds. Now, these are all symbols. You don't have to literally visually do this. I know that some people have a hard time visually visualizing stuff it's cool it's no big deal you can hear voices reaffirming who you are it's still it's a metaphysical practice we're talking about here so golden rings okay golden rings coming out of your head okay there's a cloud above you but golden rings are coming from out of your head this is in your imagination you can do it in real life too that's cool you're in a state bordering to sleep so this is where you're going twilight sleep whatever you want to call it the cloud starts to ascend. These golden rings literally start to like connect you to what is going on beyond the clouds. Cloud is going up. You can see the sun. Everything is great. Now, the clarity of what you want here is, the, is this is where you inject that, right? The desire comes in. This is the clarity about what you want. And you just, this is the time to gently be like, oh, here it is. No big deal. I find... And it makes sense to me going through this process that when you do this, the more abstract or like narrative based we make uh, techniques, the more effective they seem to be. Like I've seen time and time again, I think the most effective technique I've seen to date from everything I've spoken about, and this isn't one that I even read about. It was like a conflation of, of multiple things. Um, was is this mirror technique right and if you don't know what that is maybe we'll recap it but it's in previous episodes i talk about a lot um and this mirror technique works because it basically creates a distance between you as you view yourself as you're awake like you think you have thoughts and feelings about your world about you about all these things you go in your imaginal realm that's one step removed that's cool but it's still kind of you right you know how that is and then the mirror, though, when you start engaging with that world, it's now another step removed from your base level self here. That's easier to play around with. Same thing for the cloud and the temple. The cloud, is just use these concepts. People use waterfalls. Like think of going into a waterfall and like, you know, just taking what they need from water. They don't have to ever worry that the waterfall isn't going to be there. They don't worry about carrying the most water back to where they are right this is a way to think of abundance but this is something that people use and think about it works because that's actually an energy behind it where something is actually happening we have access through that through visualization through conceptions this doesn't even have to be like an acute visual thing that you're like every detail is perfect it's just an energy that you should start to feel lift as you're trying to go into this state of the wish fulfilled okay now that we've spoken about that, let's talk a little bit about the energy of feeling blocked or feeling stuck or feeling just like, you know, one step forward, two steps back. Because I know a lot of people have been experiencing that. There's, listen, there's just a lot of shit going on out into this world we're co creating. Recognize it as a reflection of your internal state. And then you should see, you'll be like, oh shit, okay, hold up. All right, how do I do this wish thing again? How do I make sure I get exactly what I want? Let me just, let me just, that's what we're, that's the moment we're in right now. Now, if you push that away and you focus on the energy of feeling stuck or not feeling good or not getting what you want, you're 100% going to create that too. That's the, the trick of this game is like whatever you believe, whatever you focus on, whatever you place your attention on, 
you will literally create that in your world. And it might not be to the time factor of like instant, like holy shit, you just imagine this and now here it is in front of my face. Sometimes it can be that. Sometimes the distance in time is so short where we're like, what the fuck? And that's what people ascribe synchronicity to and all these things. Now, the trick is, is that's always going on. That's always accessible. And even if you don't feel like it is, just by changing your internal state, watch what you're saying to yourself. Let's say like a lot of people have been in the readings, they're like, you know, um, you know, sometimes I feel like I just don't have access to, to the magic of the world. I'm like, well, you just said what happened there. You literally defined your reality by saying how you feel and therefore you create it. People are like, yeah, but if I just don't feel like this, how do I, you know, like this is, it's inauthentic. If I feel sad, should I just imagine myself feeling good? Isn't that just like pushing something away? That's not what I'm implying. First of all, to get through a state defined as sadness, like you're going to have to do that work no matter what. So if you define yourself as happy, trust that you're going to be on a process and a path that helps you work through these emotions in a productive way. That would lead to happiness. That would lead to joy. That would lead to fulfillment, contentment. So you're not going to negate any experiences you have to go through. And this also reemphasizes the point that you don't get to choose all of the circumstances and events and situations that lead you to your destination, which is the feeling of the wish fulfilled, the feeling of your desire being achieved. That's why we retroactively, retrospectively look back at it when we do the imaginal acts. Now, so I don't get pegged as like a hopeless, fucking ridiculous optimist. This, again, does not negate the process of going through intense energetic periods. We kind of know some of the things we sign up for when we become human beings or experience our existence as a human being going through the world. But if you can change that perspective of this has to be a process involving pain, suffering, discomfort, it doesn't mean you won't get those things at all, right? If you're, if you're using that much energy against something, it's actually likely you'll get them. But what it does mean is when those things that traditionally would have come around that caused you those emotional states, you'll have the proper knowledge and wisdom to be like, oh, okay, I see what this is. I, I recognize I'm, I'm in this now. I'm going through it. But let me recalibrate, set my destination. You can move out of situations. I'm only talking in personal experience. Situations that maybe have taken my entire life to transcend, you break through them. Like you, it's just what starts happening. It's a firm conviction and faith and belief in yourself fundamentally. That's why we talk about you being God. That's why we talk about your imagination being God. It starts with you. You can't uh, look to someone else for all of the answers. They're, they're all reflections of you. So of course people are going to have amazing insights and beauty and things to tell you. Of course they are. Like, that's you. Of course, you're everything. That's amazing. There's also going to be people who fucking think you're an idiot or a lunatic or disagree with you. That's also going to exist. Your doubt will also be reflected back to you. And people don't love facing that fact. But if your circumstances aren't really where you want them to be, you're operating from that space. And you will certainly get reflections back to you. That's cool. It's a test. It's calibration. You're calibrating yourself. That's also Really important to remember. If you don't, um, it feels like bad shit is happening to you. And then you're giving, placing your attention on external reality, not asking you to fight external reality. We don't like childishly put it away and immaturely be like, oh, stupid, I don't like it. What we do is we go, okay, that's, that's a thing. I'm going to lightly move my attention away from that and onto something I care about internally in my imagination, feel it out. If you're in a place you don't want to be financially, geographically, relationally, creatively, go to sleep, use these techniques, lift the cloud, golden rings coming from your head and heart, golden rings, lifting this cloud. Could you even turn the cloud cloud? Cloud gold is what I meant to say. Turn the cloud gold from the golden rings. It lifts up. There you go. Put it, put it in. The feeling of already being the person you want to be, having already done the thing you wanted to do. Uh, one thing that's also been coming up is in, uh, I gotta say, I love these fucking readings because you get such a fucking snapshot 
of like movements and energy. I know all of my readers, energy reader friends, anyone who does this stuff, astrologers, you see these fucking trends. And of course you do. It's a reflection of you. But it's amazing to see how collectively, as these reflections of each other, we go through these things kind of like, yeah, that's what's going on. It's fucking cool. It's really cool at the end of the day. I forgot what I was saying. Shit. It's going to happen in this episode. We're talking about some woo shit. We're losing senses of identity at times. I I know that some people are like, well, everything is my imagination. Does that mean anything is real? Like, is anything real outside of me? Yes and no. Uh, yes, of course. Don't be a fucking... How many times am I going to say? Don't be a weirdo. If you really start to think this is all you in like a self-centered, egotistical way, that's like when you're like, hey, I think I figured out that my consciousness is Jesus Christ. That's amazing. Uh, too bad no one else knows this. Too bad no one else is Jesus Christ except me. That's not good. If you're like, hey, I figured out I'm fucking Jesus Christ, and so is everyone. Holy shit. Let's talk about and explain what that means. That's good. That's good. Because then if you can effectively explain it. I mean, just be prepared if you don't fully have that shit locked in. This happened to me 20 years ago. I was trying to explain all this. You sound crazy. And what it is, is like it's your doubts being reflected back to you. I had like a conception and awareness of what this meant, but I didn't actually live through enough of it to be like, oh, okay, I get it. I see actually like how to practically use it for myself and help other people. You'll definitely do that because once you get this shit, you don't have to even do the technique so much. That's one of my faults, I think, in this podcast is once I figure something out, I move on from it. So like they're archived in the episodes and I'm trying to do a better job of organizing those and laying it out for people. But I don't use the techniques that much. But I do know over the past few weeks, it, it seems like I'm being pushed more in that direction. It feels like I'm being called, whoever's compiling me in some future, who the fuck knows, to talk about this stuff because I think people move through a lot of the dense kind of sticky energy. It's still around. It's still kind of like... Nah. But now they're like, all right, now what? I moved through that. I survived. I nine of wands that shit. I'm still standing. It's all good. What the fuck do I do now? And that's kind of like seven of cups. Like some paths may lead to great things, amazing things. Many of them, some may lead to uh, external situations that don't feel great. That's cool. You don't have to worry about the not so great stuff. You just set your destination with your feelings, with your intentions. Use the techniques, right? Use the technique of going to sleep as before you're going to sleep from within your own perspective. You're climbing the ladder, right? You're climbing the ladder. You're not watching yourself climb the ladder. You're climbing the ladder. As you do that, as you feel each rung, place yourself from within that world into the state that implies whatever you want has already happened. Run it back five seconds, no longer than that. Five second loop. Just don't, you can let your mind wander a little bit, but don't, you know, bring it back gently to that until it feels like, you're good. I remember what I was going to say. Amazing. Okay. Took that long. If you know what it's like when you're hungry, you're like, I'm fucking starving. You're like, oh, God, I could eat anything. You know, this is just an idea we have in our heads. We can go much longer without food than we think. But it's like, I'm so hungry. I want that so bad. And then you eat it. And then you don't want it anymore. Right? You're just like, okay, I'm good. I, I ate. I can move on with my day. Right? That is very much what we're going for in the imaginal realm. Here. Like this is the state of like, okay, I just did this in my imagination. My imagination is God. It creates reality. When I do this, if I, once it feels like I'm done, like I'm done, you're done. You don't have to worry about it. You don't think about the food for the rest of the day. If it was a really good meal, you can admire it. You'd be like, wow, that meal was great. Sure. But you don't question like, did I eat? Am I still hungry? You're not hungry anymore. You will feel like that. So if you don't feel like that after your first try of doing this or your second or your third or whatever, persistence is your friend, right? Resiliency is your friend. Eventually, you will feel the qualitative internal shift without a doubt. And then shit will happen in your life. It'll be like, what? How did that happen? What? You just feel like that. Okay, let's say you can't do any of that. Let's say you're just like, fuck, I can't visualize. It's too rocky. I really feel off center. I don't know what's going on. And let's say you're missing that that's probably happening because you're like shifting into a different version of yourself where like that world can't exist. So it feels like the apocalypse. It's like everything is going fucking wrong. And like how many people are having that experience right now? If you just look out in the world. 
kind of looks like the apocalypse to a lot of people. That's a reflection of an internal state. It's all good. I promise you. I wonder if like a lot of people think like the world, there'll be like meteors hitting the planet and zombies and shit. And I'll just be like somewhere being like, it's all good. Don't worry about it. It's just a reflection of your internal we're not going to go to those worlds. I'm very confident my tolerance for that is not very high. Um, so if you really, ah, I forgot what I was saying, got lost in zombie. Oh, no, I remember. Is it going to be one of those? The apocalypse happens internally. That means your external reality might be reflecting it back to you. It's likely that it is. That's cool. Kill yourself until you can't find the body. You don't even know where you hid the body. The old version of you is dead. You can't even find the old version. Where's the body? You mafia it. They're gone. You can't you can't find that body. It's dead. Bye bye. The old you is gone. That's how you do it. And then you change into the and it's fine. And that might be a little freaky if you haven't done that before. It takes some getting used to. Psychedelics are pretty helpful. They'll help you get familiar with that process. You lose your sense of self, these conceptions, these ideas, and then it's reconstituted again. It's like, okay, cool. I get it. And I get the shape where this is going and I see kind of the ultimate beauty and unconditional love that supports everything. Great. Awesome. That's wonderful. Okay. Let's say you can't do any of that shit though, right? You can't visualize. You're like, great. Techniques didn't work. Do you know how many people hit me up looking for like uh, relationship stuff and I give them the mirror technique specifically and like, I'm like, do you know about that? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, did you do it? And they're like, no. Just do it. I don't like, I don't know. Like people, I have plenty of shit people can pay for. There's so many. There's the readings. There's the Patreon. This is going to be music. There's all this shit. This is free. This is literally more valuable than any of that. I won't say equally is valuable. Let's just say equally. Let's be nice to the extra content stuff out there. But this will give you whatever state you want. Do you want to become a patron because you think maybe it's interesting, but it's too much money? Imagine yourself being like, oh yeah, I, I can't believe I had that extra money to pay for that. Don't do it for my Patreon. Do it for someone else's. I don't want to make this seem like a self-serving thing. Try it with whatever you need to do. Let's do a group imagining. Pause. Group imagining. Financially, if there's something that you want, whatever it is, big, small, in between, you just know you want it. It's cool. Don't judge it. It's not bad. You're not bad, but you want it. You just imagine tonight or in a drowsy state at any point even just if you can accept it in the moment i know there are some people who can do that quantum jumping right in the moment it's pretty great love it um just accept that you have it just accept that you have it accept that you have everything you need in order to get it some of you that may be buying it and then the money comes in sometimes we want to pull that trigger with ourselves play that game little hide and seek that's cool Sometimes, you know, something will magically come in and you go, oh, that's the money for that or whatever. It's big, small, whatever. Just play around with, with money because I know there's a lot of like, there continues to be a lot of money stuff. Um, and Venus and Virgo with attention to detail in the realm of kind of like finances and wealth and abundance, pay attention to like everything that comes up when you're dealing with money stuff. I think all of us kind of at one time or another fall into the trap of thinking we've like totally transcended money as a sense of security. And some of us have, of course, and I'm, I'm not including myself in that group right now, just because I like to learn more lessons about it. I think that's why I go through this stuff. But if you're like, all right, I'm fucking done. You totally like, you want to have attention to detail to all your reactions to money, making a lot, losing a lot, different ways, different streams. But ultimately what it comes down to is a sense of abundance. Now, don't judge the process and the paths you take to learn those lessons, right? That's really where you're moving to as long as that end state implies that like you're content, fulfilled, grateful, appreciative, feels really good. That's great. Do that. I got a little sidetrack there. Group imagining though, just get that thing you want. Soon, by next week, fucking don't delay. What's the point of delaying? What's the fucking, what's bullshit with that? Do it tonight. Do it now. Whatever. Pause the thing. Do it now. It's done. You should feel that feeling like after you eat a meal. You're done. It's done. You did it. Watch reality bend itself to, to give you that. Time and time again, focus on good shit too. Have good, you know, uh, fucking aspirations. That's the word I was looking for. Again, I'm going to go back to this thing. I'm not, I'm like teasing it out. Let's say you can't visualize. Let's say you can't use the techniques. This is all you do. You just say to yourself, like, get into the feeling and you just go, holy shit. 
holy shit, that's fucking, oh, I can't, that's amazing. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this wonderful? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's the state you want to be in. Find that state within yourself. Apply it to any situation. Any situation in your life. Holy shit, that, oh my God, that's a, that's a, that's a state of consciousness that you're allowed to embody. It triggers and it summons and it pulls. The reason those type of energies of awe, wonder, fulfillment, contentment work so well is because they're light. They're not heavy. They're not dense. They're super powerful, but they're very light. It's like laughing. Laughing is so fucking powerful, but it's light. Even if someone has a crazy fucking laugh, it's like, blah, 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 blah. you know it's a laugh and it's fucking light. You know, if someone made a weird laugh noise to you, and it, but it wasn't a laugh, you'd be like, holy shit, get the fuck away. This, there's, this person has problems, right? But that's luckily not, not how laughter works so it's light but powerful so try to keep it into that like isn't this amazing that's why i say in the imaginal techniques and in the first one where i spoke about it i like to build in that extra sense of wonder into it now if you're asking yourself noah surely there are patterns and things and all of these just shit happens in our life that we this isn't going to work for you just have to go through stuff sometimes cool totally absolutely if that's your choice. If you don't want to do it like that, don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. Now recognize this isn't always a conscious decision. There are subconscious intuitive patterns that we have desired to play out. But if you're like absolutely sure there's a pattern that's just been like dominating, it's just like crushing you, fucking this, that, just go to the end of having transcended it. That really does work. Now, if you oscillate and go back and feel the pattern has come back and you start to doubt it, you just... You're delaying the inevitability of what you originally implanted. A lot of times we don't even remember and think about what we've planted in terms of seeds, imaginal seeds, before we experience them. Sometimes we do. That's kind of like deja vu too. It's like, whoa, I think, what the fuck was that? I feel like I've been here before. It's like you did. You did this before when you were sleeping. You built that reality for yourself and you woke up to it for a second. You're like, whoa, that's weird. It's like waking up in a lucid dream in your dreams. Like, oh shit, I think I'm dreaming. I'm, but you, you're, you're in that in-between state. Like you can kind of like, I levitate a lot in my dreams and like fly and go in these places. But like in the dream, I'm not like, whoa, it's so weird I can fly. There's some part of me that's like, hmm, this isn't quite, this is not usual, but I guess I live here now and this is what I do and I know how to do it. That's basically what we're doing here. Okay, We always have access to this divine consciousness, which is you. And that is what creates what you call the world, what you call external reality, what we call external reality. We can, how cool is it that we can agree on shit? We all know what an orange is. We all know what a dog is. We all know what a tree is. We all know what Jupiter is probably at this point, right? That's cool that we've collectively fragmented it off into individuated states of consciousness. And then are like, yeah, that's fucking Jupiter. That's the color orange. Badass. That's that's just a cool fucking thing to do. Don't forget that it's cool. If you forget that this is cool, then you might think it sucks sometimes. Even the sucky parts are fun. This is like a Millarepa thing. This is like just the vibe of Millarepa I love. And that's not explicitly says too many places, but he's like whenever he goes anywhere. Millarepa is the Tibetan yogi who, uh, I'm not going to go into the whole Millarepa backstory. But anyway, just cool fucking dude. And he, you know, and you can look at these. These are all allegories or real people. It doesn't matter. Same thing. Don't get caught up in that. So he went around, meditated all these places, and there'd be all these demons, like nature spirits, being like, fuck you, Millarepa. Don't meditate here, you piece of shit. You motherfucker, we're going to throw stuff at you. And he's like, ah, no, 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 Like, I got this. Like, I will. And he's like, starts singing a song to his guru. And he's like, hey, um, Talopa, you're the best. You're so cool. Thank you for teaching me all this cool shit. I love it. He's really talking to himself here. All the characters are you. So you're talking to yourself like, thank you that I have this ability to do this. And then he's like, oh, I love meditating. When he's saying meditating, let's take the word meditating and just say like imagining or having awareness of like who you actually are. That's meditating. I would like to begin to constructively move away from the idea that meditation only looks like one thing or the other. It can look like anything to you. It could be gardening. It could be petting your cat or dog or whatever. 
Whatever you do for meditation, that's meditation for you. I don't want to have to do it this very specific way. There are surely benefits to all the styles of meditation, but just whatever it is. So when he's like, whenever I'm meditating in like a beautiful place and there's running water, he's like, I love it. It's fucking great. And then he's like, but whenever I'm meditating in like a really rocky, dangerous kind of fucking crazy animals around me, demons, he's like, I really love it. He's like, that's the real shit right there. That's the good stuff. And so like, you can look at him. He's like, oh, this guy's crazy. Who would, who, would, who would want to be there? The reason he says that is he knows it's not any different than the other place. And his experience of it and being able to transcend challenges and obstacles, and that's what the demons and hard terrain are in your life, just the shit you go through that doesn't feel great, that's the real level up shit. That's when you're like, wow. It's really easy to think that all of this metaphor, whatever, whatever it is, imaginal, galactic, any narrative astrological, the, the benefit of these are to show us who we actually are. That's like the real juice of it. If they dominate you, like you're again making a false idol. You're literally projecting out your divinity onto something else and saying, that's God, that's real, that's what it is. This does require a certain amount of awareness to not like go berserk when you realize you're like master of your universe. But like, it's cool. It's not, it's not that hard. Just use the golden rule as much as possible. Honesty, uh, fucking just with yourself. That's that's the most important thing, and you're pretty much good to go. Once you establish that, you should be able to imagine like whatever you want for yourself relatively easily. But you will also begin to recognize that like challenging situations, like feeling stuck or being a slave to a pattern or being like trapped or falling asleep. Like, there's total that. That's like the best shit. That, that's why we do it. We don't do stuff that's not the best. Do you understand that yet? Like, realize that. You don't do shit that's not the best. Why would you do that? There's so there's infinite things to do. Did you know that? There's literally infinite things to do and experience. Infinite. And you chose this. Why did you do that? Because you're dumb? Because you're being punished? Because you made some bad choices? Because karma? Because what? Sure. Okay, cool. Play that narrative out. See how that works out for you. Is it fun? Is it great? I don't know. Those are things that I value. Also, like, let's talk about, I know things can seem bleak out in the world, but like having fun is so fucking important. Do we understand that? Having fun is like an essential dude. That's like an essential worker. Someone whose job it is to have fun. In like a real, like in a balance, really. You're just having genuine fun. Don't push it too far. It's not about partying or anything like that. It's just have fun, whatever you're doing. That's a job. That's an energetic job that many of us take on. Honor it and have some fucking fun. For real. Don't judge yourself. Okay. What else do I have to talk about? What is it? Yeah. Okay. The illusion of free will. Uh-oh. What now? You do have free will and a higher dimensional reality. That's why we use the imagination, the mirror world, whatever other techniques you want to use to disassociate yourself only from the perspective of who you are while you're awake in this world, which is shifting rapidly, and that's also a valuable modality. But it feels like we're making decisions while we're awake here. Always, like, do you know how many decisions I make in a day? So many decisions. And I'm making those motherfucking decisions. I'm like, yeah, I'm making that. I'm making that. But what's really going on is we're playing out a script that we wrote for ourselves. So you go, okay, that sounds good, but how do I write that script? How do I direct that? How do I produce it? And then how do I, I guess I'll just act it out because that's what we're doing anyway. So the techniques, that lifting of the cloud, that implanting of the imaginal wish fulfilled, that's how you do it. Watch what happens in your life. Now, if you give up because you don't get instant results, that's just called being impatient. That's okay. It's no big deal. To be like, well, you know, I've been waiting my whole life I've been doing this for 20 years and it's nothing. No, it's that's not how it works. No one's waiting 20 years doing this shit. Every single person who's like, this shit doesn't work. I tried it and didn't. You gave up. That's all that happened. And then you didn't try it again. Literally, that's it. Eventually, everyone gets to the point where like, oh, this, this is how it works. For sure. And the beauty is, is you can engage with this in any modality, any way you want. You can do it through philosophy, through um, deep contemplative introspection into your own world you can look at it from like religious context and metaphysical and stuff and mythology science whatever you want figure out the cool way to do it that works for you 
that's most likely what you're supposed to be doing anyway. I get the sense that a lot of people listening to this podcast have like genuine energetic jobs to fulfill, but they may feel like they're not totally like there yet. And if they are there yet, they're like, what the fuck? That's cool. We all have those feelings, but like if you're on that path, honor it and do the shit you're supposed to do, right? That's essentially what I tell people in these readings when the cards, you know, the cards give you a little more emotional context, but like that's basically the gist of it. Like don't not do what you're supposed to do. And you know what it is. Everyone knows what it is deep down inside. And if you don't know what it is, then you imagine knowing what it is. And this seems like cheating. It seems like not being fair. Seems like this is this is not how you can't just do that. Yeah, you can. Sorry. It doesn't for anyone who still thinks this is like not how it works or like you don't go through like it's too easy or like there's things that you just have to go through. It's like, sure, that also. This doesn't negate any range or spectrum of feeling or emotion, what we would call positive or negative. It doesn't negate any of that, but it is always your choice i think not in this world but like on a soul level how much you want to recognize this and once you kind of hit that nexus point of that then you start to play out these best versions of yourself like pro level advanced level elite level versions of yourself because you've caught on to the trick your avatar here caught on finally you're living out that timeline you're like oh shit okay 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 all right, now I got it. Now, like, there's a higher version of you being like, yeah. And it's not even just one version of you. It's infinite cascading versions of you that are like, okay, this is the part in time where this person wakes up and they're going to fucking, they're going to they're gonna get it from then on out. They're not going to be able to forget that that's what's going on. They may play, like, a game of amnesia, but, like, they're going to remember pretty much this is what's going on. The practical benefit in reality, in external reality, the world we live in all the time is things will get better as more people realize this because then they'll stop projecting outward their internal discomfort, rage. That's how you end up with Trump, right? It is literally just a projection of people's internal states. That's why I say I like Trump sometimes. You can really gauge how much someone is worrying. It's not that I don't say he's a schmuck. Okay, can I be clear about that? But it is, if you fucking hate that guy so much, you are literally, there's something in you that is resonant with that that you're not dealing with and he becomes the canvas in which you can project that out. That's all I'm saying. This doesn't mean you have to like him. I'm fucking around when I say that. But I'm not also, there are, there's, there's a val there's an energetic value for someone taking on that role. You don't have to admire it. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with anything that comes out of his mouth. You can be ready for whatever. But like, that's what it is. That's also why I think a lot of people don't resonate with Biden. They can intuitively sense this at some point. They'll vote for him. But they're like, what the fuck is this? I don't know what that is. I don't really operate like that. A lot, I don't know people who are like overly identifying with him. Because his vibe's a little weird. It's like, what the fuck are you, what are you doing, man? Anyway, I don't want to get into that stuff. It's not neither the time nor place, but people will always reflect back how you feel to you. So when you feel a little wonky, feel a little unstable, guess what's going on? Probably going to get some, some cascading projections of that in your world. But when you can withdraw those projections from external reality, gently place your attention on your imaginal reality, your felt sense of what is going on internally. Isn't that amazing when you do that? Isn't that wonderful? That's so cool. Thank you. When you do that, you're good. Then we're really, now you're cooking with gas. Now you're cooking with gas. That's good stuff. All right. Place yourself elsewhere mentally if you're in a state you don't want to be in. That's it. If it takes a little bit of work, that's what the lifting of the cloud is for. That's where the golden rings help lift the cloud. Golden cloud. Lift it up. That's when you do it. Place yourself elsewhere mentally when you do that that's it would you like to be somewhere else geographically try it out with that would you like to be in the loving embrace of someone who makes you feel really good in a healthy way where you both can grow do that whatever you would you like to feel totally abundant no matter what's going on you always have more than enough you're able to support the peoples in in your life effortlessly go there live there then you won't feel hungry for that state anymore. If you still feel like you want it, 
you'll notice, you'll notice your reactions to things. Do not judge yourself. It's the worst thing you can do in that moment is judge yourself. Not only is it worse, just not, don't judge yourself there. It's not going to help you get to the state where you don't hunger for it anymore, if that makes sense. So just be like, okay, cool. I guess I'm still a little hungry. I haven't eaten that, that full meal yet. Just persist in this stuff. Really do it though. Don't forget to do it. If you don't write shit down, imprint your reality, imprinting your reality, right? Literally write it down physically. Someone asked the other day on the Patreon, what, uh, on, on a live stream it was, you know, is there a difference between writing down and typing on a computer? It's like, I don't know at the end of the day, of course not. But like for me, actually physically writing it down literally seems to be like taking it from that reality, not just in the digital realm, putting it into this one. And then shit starts to happen. Don't forget your author in your life. That's like, definitely don't forget that. It's pretty important. Otherwise, someone else will gladly write it for you. It's still you, but you'll create a character who makes you play a role. And then you'll say, oh, that character made me play that role. What a piece of shit. And it's you the whole time. When you catch on to that, you take the pen. You go, oh, cool. I'm going to write I'm gonna write some cool shit right now. That sounds good. Cool. Have you realized you've already arrived yet? That's really important. Just you're there. You get it? You don't have to wait. Don't distance yourself from your objective don't distance yourself from having the wish fulfilled the dream come true you're there oh you don't see it in front of my face right now how could i be whatever just can we recognize that there's higher dimensional reality it, play around with them don't even like recognize it don't take certainly don't take my word for it <laughs> no one should be taking my word for anything except bitcoin how about fucking bitcoin motherfucking bitcoin do you know Bitcoin is literally just anyone who's invested in Bitcoin? It's just the constant process of seeming like a genius at some times and seeming like a total fucking moron. It's perfect. I love it. Crypto crypto currency. That's how you have to say it. That's how they let you in the club. Cryptocurrency is fucking amazing. This is an amazing time to plug Discord, where I still learn from people every day. We share knowledge. We share wisdom. The only piece of advice I did on Instagram Live about crypto the other day, was it yesterday? Um, find a community of people. That's the best thing I can say. It's the only thing that actually like really seems to matter at the end of the day because you'll have like that pooled knowledge. You can then go off in whatever direction you want to to learn about things, but like that's the move. So is this a shameless plug for the Discord when you join Patreon? Perhaps, but it's actually really beneficial too. Like this is actually, like that's the only thing. People will be like, what do I do? How do I do this? I answer as many questions as I can publicly on live streams, but a lot of it is just me repeating myself. And what's much more efficient is like plugging into a community of people who can help you. And that's what we're doing. That's what this podcast is. We will have branch live events are going to happen, by the way. We're moving back to that reality. I know Corona is going to be raging, whatever. Things are going to happen. I don't even know that. We'll see what happens. But there will be live events, and we won't have to wear masks. I promise you. It's going to happen. So stay tuned for those whenever reality catches up to that. Uh, that's it for this week. Readings, all of those things. Things are fun. Syncpodcast.com. Instagram is popping off. Twitter always. I'm just going to name social media sites. Twitch, is that social media? YouTube, uh, Lycos, Netscape, um, DOS, Floppy Disks, um, Snake. Cool. All right, until next week, happy imagining. Love you.